Well, hello. Uh, it's Dexter and me, and we're back in our MX-5 and back in the Brecon Beacons where this car belongs. Um, really sorry there haven't been videos of late. Um, I've not been very well, and I thought today I'd make something of a different video. Um, nothing to do with cars, nothing to do with cameras. Um, but I thought I'd tell you about my life with multiple myeloma. Um, as it has affected the channel lately. Uh, so if you're not interested or if you're queasy about these sorts of things, uh, um, look away now. Uh, if you are interested, perhaps you suffer from something similar yourself, then hopefully you'll find my story um, interesting and uh, empathic, is that a word? Yeah. Um, now obviously, um, everybody's fight if you like or battle or the way they deal with uh, cancer or any chronic illness is very personal to them they, uh, the way they deal with it will be different their experiences will be different um, and I'm not going to claim that I'm some sort of guru for people suffering with cancer. Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm just an ordinary bloke who happened to catch a very, very frightening disease. Um, my story, uh, around about four and a half years ago, I was getting ill all the time. Um, I'd get colds, I'd get viruses, I'd get stomach bugs, which was unusual for me. Um, uh, my mother had died around about that time as well. My doctor thought I was suffering with stress and depression. Um, but I kind of knew that wasn't the case. Uh, anyway, uh, I was signed off work for a while. And when I went back uh, around about just over four years ago, I started experiencing some terrible, terrible back pains. Um, so I went to see a chiropractor, um, as you do, thinking I slipped a disc or something um, whilst I was out hiking or whatever um, anyway he was kind of manipulating me and moving my bones around and doing this that the other and it wasn't getting any better so around about October 2014 start of October 2014 my wife suggested I go and have um, an x-ray you can self-refer uh, for an x-ray so I went along and uh, within two days of that, my GP was on the phone saying I had to go into hospital as my back was effectively breaking. <laughs> um, there were some nasty lesions on my spine that he did looking at, and he thought I had multiple myeloma. So I went into hospital, um, and within a few days, uh, after having a very uncomfortable bone marrow biopsy, um, and some further tests, it was confirmed that I had multiple myeloma nerve. I was also told that my L3 vertebrae was in a shocking state um, and therefore that I should avoid movement, <laughs> uh, I should lie still, um, which of course I ignored. Uh, anyway, they, uh, they sent me home from hospital with uh, a plan for some radiotherapy and then chemotherapy and then a stem cell transplant at some stage in the future. Um, so I went back home and around about the start of December 2014 I suffered an absolute crippling, crippling lower back pain uh, to the extent that I was, I just couldn't move. Um, so I was taken into hospital again and it was found then that my L3 vertebrae had effectively dissolved. <laughs> um, the myeloma, which affects your bone marrow and bone strength and bone density and things like that, had effectively um, <laughs> killed my L3 vertebrae. So I was then taken off to the Heath Hospital in Cardiff where I had to have uh, emergency back surgery and I came back home after that. Uh, well, I say after that, there were a few um, 
few complications. Uh, I had sepsis, um, MRSA, uh, pneumonia, a few things anyway. It all went horribly wrong. Good boy. Um, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Anyway, a plan was then set up for me to have my stem cell transplant, so I started on a course of chemotherapy. Um, but within a month of starting that course, um, I suffered a massive uh, pulmonary embolism. My right lung had completely filled with blood um, and I nearly died. So uh, they had to stop my chemotherapy. Um, so when it came time to have my stem cell transplant in July of 2015, uh, I wasn't starting from a very good point. But anyway, I had the transplant. It was absolutely horrible. Uh, I wouldn't want to go through it again, but it saved my life because uh, without it, I wouldn't be here right now. Um, so that's the kind of backstory. But living with multiple myeloma, like I said, everybody's going to be different. Um, for me, I've never really recovered from my back being broken. Um, it's left me uh, permanently disabled. Um, I have to walk with sticks or a frame. I've got one of those wheeled walker things, which is uh, a constant source of, uh, of humour in our family. Um, and other things, it makes me very, very, very tired. <laughs> and by that, I mean exhausted. Um, my usual day, I will get up around about half nine, ten o'clock, and I'm back in bed by half six, and I sleep for 16 hours a day. Um, I've tried, <laughs> I've tried everything, I've tried all the normal sort of remedies, but I am permanently tired. I also get sick a lot because um, my immune system is compromised. Um, I don't tend to get too many things in the way of colds and things like that, but I get a lot of nausea and sickness, um, which is horrible. I have a real phobia about being sick. I absolutely hate it. Um, but now I have to live with almost daily bouts of nausea and sickness, which isn't very nice. Um, I have to be really careful about my health um, and things like infections because I think one of the biggest killers of people with myeloma is pneumonia. So I have to be really careful, especially as I spend so much time in bed, um, not to get uh, a pneumonia. <laughs> um, so I have to be really careful about things like hygiene and, and whatnot, those sorts of things. And, I have to live quite healthy. Well, I've always lived healthily, but I have to live really healthily. You know, my diet, things like that. I mean, I don't eat a, a lot of bad foods. I don't drink alcohol. I've never smoked or taken any sort of drugs, so that's never been a problem. But the biggest thing is the exhaustion uh, and my lack of mobility. Anyway, um, despite all that, I'm not going to give in. To it, uh, people always say, "Why have you got a Mazda MX-5 when your back is knackered?" And I think, well, I could have bought an SUV, but that, to me, as someone who's always liked his cars, was giving in, and I'm not going to give in to this. Now, I've never really thought I'm fighting or battling cancers. It's never really felt like that to me. All I felt is, I have an illness, it's not going to go away. Just get on with it and live with it and do the best you can. And that is my mantra for living my life really. Um, do the best you can. Anyway, uh, Dexter and I are going to enjoy this glorious, glorious spring weather we're having. We're going to park up and we're going to fly our drone.
and I'm going to stall the car, but we've cut that bit out. then how has uh, multiple myeloma affected me well it's changed my life entirely um, I, I had to retire from work at the age of 50 um, I couldn't really carry on working when I'm sleeping 16 hours a day and being ill most of the time uh, I don't think they'd have put up with that for very long I had to give up um, hiking which I really loved but yeah I'm not as strong as I used to be I lost um, around about two stone in weight all of which was muscle mass um, so yeah yeah I mean day to day and overall my life has been transformed beyond anything recognizable to what it was before but but what it does allow me to do now is get out every day if I like uh, if I can with Dexter who has been my best mate really throughout all this without him and without my family I don't think I would have got through through um, through this and through the treatment and through the recovery and what not uh, but uh, I'm still here I can still enjoy days like this I mean the weather is absolutely glorious today we had that it's the fringes of storm Hector overnight but we didn't get much of it uh, and it's lovely and dry and sunny now um, so yeah I can I can enjoy days like this I am glad to be alive I've got my Dexter uh, I've got my family I've got my cars I've got my cameras I can still enjoy uh, photography, but I can't hike into the mountains like I used to. So you have to manage your expectations and do what you can. Anyway, I hope this hasn't come across as just me being self-righteous in any way. I just thought people may be interested in my story if it helps somebody who's got myeloma or cancer um, to see that you can still do things the other side of it. Um, then if it's helped one person to realize that then uh, I don't care how I've come across uh, cancer is a very personal thing any form of chronic illness is a very personal thing how you deal with it how you get over it um, how you live with it is all down to you as an individual I can't tell you what to do I can't tell you that what worked for me will work for anybody else and what didn't work for me won't work for somebody else um, but all I can say is that there is life after life-threatening diseases um, you just have to manage your expectations um, and do what you can when you can to enjoy as much as you can uh, and on that note uh, Dexter and I are gonna sign off um, there may be a video next week, I'm not sure, there may not be, we'll see how I feel. Um, but please keep watching, please keep subscribing. Um, right.
we're off now. Bye-bye.